What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Sec Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Lemke. Joined with me, as always, is my co-host, Ken Williamson. Ken, how you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing good. Um, you know, last time we were talking about video games. Yeah. And so I, I've I gotten into this pattern where I, like, see games that I like, and I'm like, ooh, I love video games. I'm going to go buy it. And got uh, this new uh, One Piece game on uh, on Steam and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool from the 15 or 20 minutes that I've been able to actually sit down and play it. So one piece, dude, that's awesome. So does it go off of one piece? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a, an original story and, but it also like incorporates some flashbacks to oh, the, uh, so cool. to the actual anime. And, and so, yeah, it's, it's really awesome. I, 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 Someday I may be able to play it and enjoy it. We'll yeah, we'll have yeah. to see. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. I I uh, I've like I said, I got in late on the Elden Ring, you know, and I'm at this point with Elden Ring where, like, I want to keep going, but like I'm saved in a place where I've got to take on this boss. And I have no idea how to win. And it, like, I'm in that where it's like, okay, if I sit down and play this, I need like two hours to beat this guy, you know? Yeah. And so it's like, you know, do I want to do that or go play like something, you know, like a quick, you know, like League of Legends or whatever, sure. uh, which I've also gotten back into League of Legends. And uh, that sucks so much time because I just spend a bunch of time on YouTube trying to like look up characters and strategy and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, dude, video games, man, it's, it's a, it's a fun ha hobby, but you know, it's, um, it's, it's a tough one. Yeah. You know? No, the League of Legends, you got to be careful too. Cause that'll like toxify your whole life. Yeah. Like, it, re <laughs> right, right. it really is just like a terrible community. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Comments. <laughs> no off. offense to, to, to riot, but <laughs> 100%. Yeah. Comments off. No talking, no, no chatting, no chat. 100%. Um, yeah, no, but that's awesome, man. Yeah. We're, we're so excited to be here with you guys. We're, uh, we're doing another episode of our dev corner. It's just Ken and I today. And today we really wanted to talk from an engineer's perspective about, um, legacy code. So we, um, we as developers, we, uh, oftentimes will um, work with, because we're both kind of in the consulting world, we will work with clients who, um, you know, take us on, who want us to either fix, enhance, or rewrite um, what would be considered a legacy system. So when we say legacy system, legacy code, let me, let me uh, read this definition of what a legacy uh, system is. Legacy code, the term legacy code, uh, usually refers to an application source code that has reached or crossed the an end of support cycle. So meaning that, you know, for, for Microsoft, um, you know, they came out with, with a, a code uh, language, a code stack system, and they no longer support that. They've moved on to ASP.NET or, um, you know, Blazor or whatever their next thing is. And there's a lot of companies that get caught in now what's a legacy system where it's not quite supported. Um, it's hard to find resources. And the, the more it ages, uh, it's harder to find developers who are going to understand the needs of that system. So the question off, often becomes, um, do we continue down the path of our legacy system or do we rewrite it? And that is a big decision for a lot of businesses because there's a lot of cost implied with both. And as an engineer, um, you know, we just wanted to take some time today and just talk about, um, you know, just, just our impressions of legacy code. Um, when maybe you should be thinking about a rewrite, maybe when you should be thinking about, Hey, just keep plugging away, keep enhancing. Um, or yeah, like, let's just, let's just, you know, bite the bullet and, and go and, uh, uh, to something more modern. So, um, I guess can all of that framing, what are your early thoughts and, uh, your experiences in working with legacy code and your experience as an engineer, on, um, you know, that balance between, you know, is this something I really should be enhancing or should I really actually be rewriting this, you know? Yeah. So 
Well, I'll start. Let me back up a little bit. I yeah. start with, you know, you had that definition, which is, I think is a good one. But I, when I think of legacy code, I actually think a little bit broader than that. You know, um, <clears throat> obviously frameworks and technologies that are out of support are, are legacy code. But a lot of times legacy code can just be code that was written by someone that's no longer in the organization. Oh, that's you know, interesting. Yeah. That is... Um, you know, it, it was their baby. Mm -hmm. They put a lot of time, maybe, maybe years into it. And now there's this big piece of software and the person that had the most knowledge about how that software works is gone. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, it may not even necessarily be in a, a framework that's out of support, but it's that we've lost the technical knowledge to understand all the nuance of how things work and how you would have to go about if you wanted yeah. to, like you were saying, enhance it, change things, whatever. And, yeah. and the reason why I broaden that definition is because even if it's in a framework you know uh, and, and is still supported, it, it the process of dealing with legacy code is different because yeah. usually when you're dealing with legacy code, your first thing that you have to do is you have to kind of assess the situation, see what's happening, mm -hmm. see how things are working. And, you know, so when you have um, code that that is uh, older and the person who wrote it is no longer with you, there isn't great documentation, um, you know, you, you have to start there, even if it's in a more modern framework. But I would also say that the definition that you gave is really good too. And we see it all the time. And so, uh, so going back to your question, what, what are, what are my first, uh, observations about legacy code? I'll, I'll tell you what it is, is that legacy code has to be, uh, if it's in an old framework, it has to be updated. Like in my mind, the, or, or let me back up and, and give sure. some caveats. Sure. So if this is a system that is mission critical, that the business is planning on using continuously in the long term, it has yeah. to be updated. Yeah. Because it, it can't be like your options with legacy code really are either you phase out this application or you have to update it because it's one of those things where, you know, you know, we talk about tech debt in, in uh, software a lot and legacy code is a big source of tech debt and tech debt is a lot like real debt in yeah. that the interest on it compounds. 100%. And so the longer you are going uh, with your legacy system, especially those that are in frameworks that are out of support, the 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 more you're going to have to pay. Yeah. And so, you know, I I usually advise clients, I say, listen, I'll I'll work on this. I will tweak around the edges, make a couple of changes whatever, but I'm telling you at, from my experience for the long-term health of your organization, your options are either this application is going away and getting phased out, or we're going to rewrite large, if not all, uh, all of the application, large portions, if not all of it, in a modern framework that that's going to be supported for all the reasons that you mentioned. Yeah, it's like this. Um, you, you know, it's it's. Uh, so, you know, I have a car, right? And, uh, you know, most, most of us have cars. And the way that I think about, you know, a lot of what you're talking about with tech debt is I can either pay to have the oil changed every three months or I cannot do that. And down the road, I can buy a new engine. Um, what's What's better, right? Like, is it better to spend $400 a year on oil changes or is it better in three years to spend twelve thousand dollars on a new engine math would tell us it's going to be a lot better to do the oil change and that is so much of um you know i had written down just just kind of um you know and we can just kind of start here but I, but i love some of the stuff you said i want to circle back on some of that but but i i loved what what you were saying there um towards the end because i think that you know for so many companies um i get it you know you're you hired on a development team maybe hired on a consultant you spend a massive amount of money on this application it took two years three years it's in development everything looks good and now they're coming back to you and already saying hey we, we already need to upgrade we need to make some changes and you're like i just paid 
for this technology. But technology is just like anything else in your life, right? It's just like your business. It's just like your house. It's just like your car. You have to invest in it. It's not going to be a one-time thing. And I think that that's sometimes where businesses um, can can kind of get caught a little bit is that they want their technology to be a one-off. We're going to build this system. We're going to build this large-scale application. And then once it's built cool, it's built. I don't ever have to touch it again. When the truth is, is that you can go down that route, but you're just going to have to rebuild it later. Whereas when you can constantly maintain an application throughout its life cycle, you're going to have a lot less costs, a lot of less tech debt to have to deal with later on. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I completely agree. You know, uh, Brent, who, who was on the, uh, on the podcast. Our first guest. Yeah. He, yeah. he has a really good way of looking at this and, and what he says, and I agree with, is that m- <clears throat> many businesses think of technology as an operating expense or an OPEX, but in all reality, technology is a CapEx. It's a, it's a capital expense. It's like a building. Yeah. It's like a piece of machinery. It's like anything else that is a cap- a piece of capital equipment, right? It depreciates over time. That That is your tech debt, you know, come kicking in. Things get older, right? But the thing is, is like, if I'm a business owner and I own a building, I own my factory, right? Yeah. They know that they're going to have to be spending money constantly to maintain right. that capital. Right. There is a capital maintenance cost and that is a capital expense. Right. And they think of it in those terms and they don't worry about yep. they, they just build that into the cost of the building. Right. They, they and, and, and our accounting practices are built around the idea that we know yeah. that capital equipment loses value over time and have to have and has to have maintenance. Right. right. But but businesses get into the idea that that technology is like an operating expense, like like the cost of, of electricity or or the cost of uh, of somebody's salary. Right. Where I just pay it once and then that's it. Right. Yeah. It's not something right. that can t- like I, I pay for it and then I have to continue to maintain it. And so that distinction between a, a capital expense and an operating expense is very, very key. And businesses, you know, where technology is not going away. It's just yeah. going to become more and more pervasive and they have to, we all have to shift our paradigm to understand that these, these technologies that we're using are capital goods. They are things that we use to, to, to make other things, right? right. They're not, right. they're not an end product usually. I mean, some, obviously some consumer facing apps are an sure. end product, but anyway, so, so yeah, I, I, I just completely agree. And, um, yeah, it's just something that businesses are just going to have to wrap their mind around or they're just going to keep on getting into the same situation over exactly. and over and over again. You know, we we had a client here recently who uh, had asked us to look at an application and now it was about a year ago and we looked at it and we said, hey, hey, listen, the technology, the framework that you're using is older. There aren't that many developers that use it anymore that are good at it, that can maintain it. Our recommendation is that for or now we can, you know, make these tweaks that you're wanting to make. But in the long term, we really ought to rewrite this in, yeah. you know, a modern Python API like Fast API or Node or or even .NET Core mm-hmm. or or any of these newer technologies um, that that are going to be continuously supported yeah. that there's going to be developers for. And they said, no, 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 we don't have the money. It's, you know, it's fine. Just make these changes and, and we're just going to move on with our lives. But here we are a year later and they're back and they're saying, uh, well, uh, yeah, looks like you might've been right. And we are now running into a lot of big problems. We want to make changes. We can't find any dev talent that can work on it. And we're like, well, you know, this is why, this is why we explain this to you. So I, I just, I completely agree, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. We went into a company actually just, uh, about a month ago and ran into exactly what you're talking about. You know, it's a, it's an older technology, technology stack. And here's, um, well, well, we'll pivot to, to, to just kind of tips for a CEO, for a, a, a CTO, anybody who's going to be leading the charge of a technology, you know, I want to give you some, some tips here towards the end about how to avoid, um, 
getting yourself into maybe a legacy system or what we would define as a legacy system, whether it be that traditional definition or even a lot of what Ken was talking about, because he's exactly right. Um, getting yourself into a situation where maybe you have a modern framework, but no documentation and no clear path because whoever built it left. Um, I think that was a phenomenal point. And so, but um, you know, we're working with a, a customer right now that it was the same thing. You know, we had to go in um, you know, their, their backend database technology is, um, and listen, you know, set, you know, a, as a company with sec tech, we have some amazing developers who have been in the game, man, 20, 30 years. Right. And, and we're facing a tech stack with this company that none of them have ever even worked with some, some of our more senior people. And so here's the thing with that. It was like, okay, um, we'll work on this. But we have to now go learn an older technology. And so, I mean, just the simple fact is you're going to pay us for that anyway. Right. Because now I get we have to go find somebody who can just go learn this, you know, and and that's that's money, you know. And so um, whether you know, so so that becomes a big factor, too, in having a legacy system is, well, I don't want to pay for the new technology. Well, you're going to still have to pay somebody to go learn an old technology. So, you know, you're probably at the end of the day not going to save all that much time or velocity in terms of speed because, you know, you're, we're, we're, you know, somebody's going to have to be in the weeds of trying to go back and, and read some outdated forums and try to figure out how to adapt. And so, yeah, I, I loved, uh, you know, everything that you were saying there and, and I completely agree. And, and going back to, to what you were talking about there about, um, you know, just, just, the differences in, in legacy systems. I love what you were talking about. And I think one of the most important things um, for any business owner, any manager, any, you know, COO, CEO, you know, CTO, um, you know, you might not understand what your dev team does as far as, te you know, uh, the, the, the technology stack that they're using and the methodologies that they're using. But, Anybody in a leadership role means that you have experience with systems. And what you do know is that um, your sales force has a system to track what they're doing, right? Your financial teams have systems that track what they're doing. It's so important that you have the same thing for your dev teams, right? That you have just, just that you know that your developers or developer has a system that they're documenting what's going on, what they're doing. And you might not even be able to, to read it and understand, but understanding that they have a system and a system that fits, you know, it, it, it takes a couple hours to go research just technical documentation and just standard templates and, and what's included. Um, that's a part of the process that I don't think it's managed enough. And you end up getting in that situation where somebody builds, yeah, a great, robust, um, you know, technology in angular which is very modern but they leave and nobody knows what's going on with this thing right and so it's so important to me that you at least make sure and hold your dev teams accountable even though sometimes it can be really like i don't know what you're talking about but you can know if they're writing it down and you can know if they're documenting the steps and, and what's going on in this application you know what i mean yeah i I think you're right about that. And to, and to add on, you know, it's something where this is why code quality and why um, best practices in coding are so important, you know, and this is another thing that, um, you know, you, you probably as a semi-technical or a non-technical person have to rely on like a dev manager or yeah. a team lead or something to do, but that you need to, you know, when they tell you, hey, we, we got the fast and dirty way to get this fixed, but we mm. need to spend some time and, and really think through and, and get a good solution. You, you need to spend that time because yeah. it's exactly what you're saying where you get these big applications that don't have good, app, uh, good documentation. And if you have good coding practices, if you're using um, the best practices as far as you know, organization of the code, you know, keeping, keeping files small, keeping things, you know, good naming, you know, there, we, I wrote a blog post a while ago, um, on good code versus bad code. And, and that is something that's so important. All of those points in that blog post are about 
how to keep your your system from becoming a legacy system, yeah. right? Yeah. How do you how do you keep your your technology from falling into these traps of okay, we need to get this done really really quickly. We're not as concerned about you know, good organization, good code quality, code reviews, making sure everybody's on the same page. You know, code review is a great way to to help manage this this problem of getting uh, creating legacy code is because when you do that, you have at least one other person who is saying, I understand this and I am on board with what's happening here. Yeah. Right. And yeah. if you have, you know, someone like that, then it's not it's not something where it's all in one person's head. There was a meeting of the minds and hopefully part of your code review is exactly what you're saying, creating documentation, yeah. writing everything down and getting all that done. So yeah, I think that, um, you know, for business owners, to me, the biggest thing that's frustrating to me about, you know, uh, business people, CTO, C C uh, CFO, whatever, is that their dev team will tell them that they need time to update packages. Yeah. They need time to go to the newest framework to to change any anything that has been uh, deprecated. You know, which for people that don't know, it just means that um, it's uh, parts of code that aren't going to be supported anymore in future versions and may be removed. So they yeah. need to be taken out. And you know, your dev team, most of the, like here, that's the thing is developers want everything to be up to date. It makes right. our life so much easier. Oh, 100%. And so we'll, we'll go to the, to the business and be like, Hey, you know what? We we've been putting out a lot of new features. We really need like two weeks to upgrade all the packages. We need to update our documentation, make sure everything's in order. And what's so frustrating to me is that the business, you know, and this goes back to what I, I was saying earlier, they don't see that as valuable because right. it's not a new feature. It's right. not a bug fix. And it's like, well, sure. But it, at the same time, if you had a giant crane and your, and your crane maintenance technician said, Hey, we got to take this crane out of service for two weeks so that we can change the hydraulics or the pneumatics or whatever. Um, you're, you're not going to be like, Oh no, just keep running it. Right. Just, right. just 100%. no, no, no. Well, let's yeah. just go on to the next project. No, yeah. no, no person right. in, is going to be like, here's this multi-million dollar piece of equipment that we've bought. And our maintenance leader is telling us we need to maintain it. And, and you're just going to be like, no, we're not doing that. That, that, I mean, it's, I mean, I guess maybe that does happen sometimes, but I think everybody in that context sees how foolish that is, but it, it, the exact same thing applies to tech. And, and I think that is one of the main reasons why code that, that maybe is still in a framework that's supported would still, what, what gets into this category that I'm calling, you know, maybe the expanded category of, of legacy code. Yeah. 100%. It's, it's like, you know, it's, it's interesting because I think everybody understands that technology in the world is just, it moves fast, right? It's constantly evolving. Why would you expect that your technology is not right? Like, and, and so, you know, when Kim was talking about packages, what, what really he's talking about is, you know, there are tools that make, let, let's say your, your website has a lot of um, forms, you know, uh, a lot of data entry. Well, developers are going to use a cert, a cert, a specific package that um makes that forms ease of use um you know it's display and it's it's ultimately you know the the way you're going to submit that and process that data um better for you and your company well they're evolving too right that package is going to evolve uh they're going to make tweaks it's going to get better right they're going to come out with new features for that package that make your forums look even better that make them run even smoother that take less load time right all of that stuff and so technology moves fast why would your technology not be moving fast right like so so that's what you know uh, as a as a from the business side that you have to um take into account is that um, tech is a forever evolving, always moving world and your technology is going to be in that category. And so just like Ken is saying, you, your developers, your teams really need time. And if they're not making time, you should probably be asking why, you know, they're not making time, um, for upgrades. Maybe they're just doing it. Not, you know, maybe not saying anything, maybe not adding it to the sprint. Um, but that's the thing, you know, and, and it does take time, you know, 
it's not uh it's not one of those things i mean it's like you know like, like ken said it's, it's like uh um you know uh Re redoing some stuff on the crane, right? You got to get a few employees. They're going to have to take time away from whatever they were doing and come over and do this. Yes, there's a time cost. There's a financial cost. Um, you know, it's not, you know, the, the most, um, you know, it's not something you're going to look at and see a bunch of progress because you had to take your, some employees and go do this. But overall, it's massively beneficial, massively beneficial. So, yeah, I completely agree with everything, um, you know, that you're saying. And I think um, I think we're kind of on the same page, you know, it comes down to, um, you know, first, you know, that first question, should I maintain my legacy system? Or should I rewrite? Well, yeah, a, a couple of great questions you got to ask is, you know, is this technology still in support? Um are there people readily available who even work in this technology and um, what is qualifying this, you know, as a legacy system? Is it just that uh, I've got something new that's just kind of a big jumbled ball mess, you know, or do I have something that's just out of support that's that's going to cause issues, um, you know, and and then moving forward, it's just going, OK, what are we going to put in place now and what systems are we going to put in place that are going to ensure that as we're building our software, we're using the right practices, we're documenting, and we're 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 laying a foundation for this um, this technology to to grow and scale beyond just the developers and the team that I have now. You know? Yeah. No, I think I think that you're exactly right about that, and. So, you know, we've talked a lot about from the business side yeah. on, on legacy code. And, and I think that, you know, we made a lot of good points, but, you know, in the time that we have left, I thought yeah. we might talk a little bit about as developers, how do you deal with legacy code? Mm -hmm. And so to me, there's, you know, there's a few pathways forward, right? You, you've already mentioned one of them, which is that you get somebody that's going to learn the old technology, yeah. right? But to me, that is the least desirable option right. because inevitably there's a learning curve. There's a reason why it's not in support anymore. There's a reason why people have moved off this technology. Yeah. And that is usually because it's, you know, relatively harder to work with. I'm not saying that it's necessarily like, incomprehensible and, and you can't do it, but just people are always trying to make things easier and more efficient. Right. And so, you know, not every time, but as a general rule, a more modern framework is going to be easier to yeah. work with. Right. And so that, that would, to me, be the, the least desirable option. The other thing that you mentioned is a rewrite. <clears throat> and I think that that is, you know, in many cases, another undesirable option yeah. because it takes a lot of time, right? Right. Um, but what I would say as a caveat to that is, and this is what I like to do, and this is what I've done for a number of companies, is to do a rewrite in parallel. And, and what I mean by that, and this is a lot of times what you can do is you can start the new application and rather than saying, okay, I'm going to rewrite every single piece of this software and, and until I'm done, we're just going to keep using the old software. What you can do and what we've successfully done in the past is is let me take one feature 100%. that this is that this application is doing and a You're lot of most times known right yeah, or, yeah. Or, or the core yeah Let's start with the core yeah or or what they want to change is, right. a is another good place yeah. to start like they want a new feature it's going to be prohibitively expensive to find somebody to yeah. work in the legacy app well let's build that feature only that feature self-contained in its own application yep. as a starting point. And then you just slowly start moving technology over to that new application. Mm -hmm. And, and it actually ends up being a really beneficial process to the business too, because when you're doing that, you have an opportunity to rethink some of your workflows. Like a lot of times, if, if you were going to do just a straight rewrite, you know, you would have what, what I would consider maybe somewhat inefficient or outdated business practices is that you're just, you know, and I think we were talking about this with JD the other day, is that so often people want to conform their work processes to the software. Yeah. When, when we as developers and technology people, we want to conform the technology to your most efficient process. Exactly. And, and when you're doing this kind of parallel piecemeal rewrite, you have that opportunity 
with every feature that you're bringing over to the new app to like redesign it if you want. Yeah. Like, I mean, it can just be a straight port if it, everything's working perfectly. Or a lot of times, you know, you'll talk to the end user and a lot of times the the current end user is not the original end yeah. user. And they may have a, a completely different workflow that they would like or or subtly different, you know. And and so that that pathway to me is very, very interesting um, is, is this piecemeal rewrite. And then the other one I'll mention is a lot of times which, and I've seen this done a lot too, is that you will write a new application around right. the legacy application. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what you'll do in that case is a lot of times you'll like containerize or, or, or have a separate server, um, running the legacy application. And then you, you write a new application around it that, that can interact and do the things yeah. that you need to do with that old application. And then you start building out the new features around the, the legacy application. And, and I, and I think that is another really good pathway forward. Um, but you know, for me personally, the let, let's try to find somebody or heaven forbid, can try to try to learn this old technology stack. I'm like, please, no, please yeah, don't let me yeah. do that. So no, 100%. <laughs> I love everything that you're saying. And I think from a from a developer's perspective, listen, um, just speaking to, to the other devs out there, you know, um, developers, listen, we have a propensity to want to say no, you know, uh, even, even when we're working on modern stuff, I mean, I don't know how many stories it's like, do I really have to do that? You know, um, we, we had that propensity, right. And, uh, because, you know, if, if you come to us and say, can you, can you do new features in this? I'm like, this is, this is illogical. <laughs> like, I don't, you know, like trying to find a way to code around your visual basic, uh, you know, kind of database, which is an older technology is it's, it, you know, we have that propensity. I think the route you go at a hundred percent depends on trust. And I think one of the, the best ways that you can build trust and that you're going to be able uh, to find the, the, the quickest path out of a legacy system is exactly what you're talking about. Um, if you go in and you try to say, Hey, we're going to take two years and rewrite this whole application and then deploy it. I, you know, it's not going to fly for a lot of, a lot of businesses, I, a lot of companies, I, almost none. Yeah. <laughs> almost. Yeah. You know? Um, and listen, if I was a business owner, I'd say no to you too. I mean, you know, um, but if you come in and say, Hey, let me take, and this is what we're doing with a, with a company that we're working with right now. We're saying, Hey, let us come in. First, what we'll do is we're going to make some little tweaks to make your life easier, you know, within your legacy system. We're going to we're going to do some things that that's just going to make it run a little better for you. Right. So so a lot of these little headaches that you have are going to go away. And then let's take the, the two largest cores of your, you know, the, the two areas that you go to the most. And let's just rewrite those. Let us rewrite those. We're going to make them look the exact same. They're going to flow the exact same. Because that's another thing that, that I think a lot of people get into a legacy system is, well, you know, our, 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 our team doesn't want to learn something new. It's like, you know what? We can make the, the, the flow, the, the use, the exact same. We're just going to do it in a way that's going to be better, just better technology, right? And so we came in and just said, hey, we're, it's going to look the same. It's going to flow the same. It can it can operate relatively the same, but it's just, it's it's going to be way faster, way more efficient, way better for you. Um, you know, can, can we just, can we do this one piece? And it's like, sure, you know, uh, you can take a piece and then that piece is going to work really well. And they're going to go, hey, can we do that again over here? And then can we do that again over here? And so, and so I, I, I think you're right. You know, it's, it's not, and this is just coding in general. I think oftentimes, I mean, very rarely is it a sprint. It's always a marathon and you have to kind of think about it that way and just know that if you're in a, a legacy system, your path out isn't going to be this one all, let's just swing for the fences, get it all done. Most likely it's just going to have to be something at a, at a more scalable pace, you know? Yeah, no, I, I think you're exactly right about that. And, you know, to kind of, put, put a cap on this. I, I think that technology, uh, developers, dev teams in general and business, you have to work together to figure out how to manage this. Yeah. It's not something where 
one side can handle everything. Yeah. It's something where you are going to have to, you as a business person are going to have to interact with your technology people. And you're, you know, it's, it's like we were talking about the other day. You, you, you have to make that, that leap and, and, um, and engage them because the, the, <clears throat> I, I think the most important takeaway for me is, is that it's never going to just get better on its own. Mm -hmm. It's, it's something where you as a business person or you as a developer, if you do nothing, it is going to continue to get worse until it is completely unmanageable. And you're, you know, I, I mean, this is maybe... Uh, a bit hyperbolic, but I mean, you, you could lose the company. You know what I mean? No, no, 100%. <laughs> it can paralyze everything. It can. I mean, you, you, you get to a point where, um, you know, I give, I give you kind of a superficial example, but you know, you could get to a point where your framework's so out of date and it has so many security exploits that someone can come in and ransomware your system. And, and now you're, you're literally 100%. at a standful standstill. 100%. And so, um, so yeah, I would say that, that what we need to be doing as, um, as technology group is that we need to be having these tough conversations with the business people and say, listen, I know that you don't want to hear that we need to back up, slow down, um, fix some of these problems that we're having. We need to update our framework. We need to go through and we need to do code reviews. We need to go through and we need to add documentation. Um, you know, I, I understand that, but it's just so important. And then from the business's point of view, exactly what you were saying earlier, if your dev team is not asking you for that, you have to ask why, yeah. like, and you need to have the conversation with them and say, Hey, are you, are you keeping up to date with the latest packages mm -hmm. with the, with the latest framework? Are you, are you on .NET six or seven? If you're not, then that, you know, yeah, that, what, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like if, if I'm still using .NET core three or, you know, net framework four, seven, whatever, like that, that's a problem. Yep. And at the very least, you need to have those conversations so that you can understand the risk that your business is exposed to right now. Right. And, and, and it's like that, you know, for all of these te different technologies. So I, I think for me in closing, that's what I would say is that it, it I mean, and we say this a lot, but it, it always comes down to communication. Yep. You, you have to, as the dev team, you have to communicate to the business. This is stuff that's important. We need to do it. As the business side, you need to communicate with your dev team, say, are we keeping up to date? Are we, what's our risk? What, what's running out of support and ask those questions. Even if, like you said earlier, you may not fully understand the answer, yeah. but just asking the question is going to get your dev team thinking about it. And, 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 and you may hear, hopefully you hear, oh, we just, you know, we're, we're doing this as we're going and everything is fully up to date. Right. But more times than not, you're going to hear, uh, well, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're two or three versions behind on this and that and whatever else. And, you know, we could probably use some time to, uh, to upgrade that. So yeah, that, that, that's what I would say about the legacy stuff. Yeah. 100%. I, I think all of this, um, hopefully has been massively beneficial from an engineer standpoint, you know, um, and, and hopefully, um, if anything, just like Ken is saying, hopefully this opened up a line of communication developers, be communicating to the business side about what you guys need to continue to um, keep your application up to date. And then from the business side, you know, again, you know, I'll go back to the truck analogy. I know, um, I know there's companies who are out there, construction companies, and they've got 30 trucks and, you know, they got people driving all over. You better believe that there's somebody in that company who's going around and making sure that these guys are getting that oil changed, right? Like, like nobody, you know, no, no one is letting them drive around in trucks that are 6,000 miles over their oil change. Don't let your dev team go way beyond on old technologies. Make sure that they're updating, hold them accountable to this. And you don't need a lot of tech expertise just to be able to say, Hey, you know, I, to be honest, I like, I, I, you know, I don't know how to fix everything in a car, but I can ask you if it's running right. Right. I can ask you if you're getting the oil changed. I can ask you if, if you're getting the service done. Same thing with your dev teams. Just make sure that they're getting the services done and make sure that you're giving them time to do it. And I think that that's going to be a huge key. And uh, hopefully if you're thinking about a rewrite, if you're, if you've, 
currently in a legacy system. You're trying to figure out what to do about it. Hopefully this gave you um, a, a couple of solutions, a couple of things to, to think about. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this week of the SecTech Podcast. We'll be back in two weeks with another guest. We'll see you soon. Thank you.